Are you familiar with this chapter in history? Napoleon took power in France after their bloody French Revolution had chopped off 40,000 heads in Paris and killed 300,000 in the Vendee. And Napoleon conquered the, the Netherlands and Prussia and Italy and then Spain. He put his brother Joseph on the throne of Spain. That's when Mexico decided to break away from Spain. Well, Napoleon wanted to take the Spanish Navy, British and French Navy and attack Britain. What happened was his Navy was defeated at the Battle of Trafalgar. Then Napoleon invades Russia with a half a million men and comes out six months later with 50,000. The Russians had burnt all their fields in front of his army and when he got to Moscow, they abandoned the city and when the winter set in, he was retreating and they attacked. Well, Napoleon was banished to the island of Elba. At this point, the British had an army and navy at their disposal. What did they decide to do? Turn their attention back to America. Well, you may have heard the line, we have met the enemy and they are ours. That was exclaimed by Oliver Hazard Perry, the captain of the American ships on Lake Erie. The British, in addition, were inciting Indian attacks, giving guns and arms to the Indians in exchange for scalps. And so the British were seizing American ships and impressing American sailors into the British Navy. This escalated into the War of 1812. British ships on Lake Erie were sent to resupply Fort Malden in Amherstburg, Ontario. But they were blocked by U.S. Captain Oliver Hazard Perry near Putten Bay, Ohio. September 9, 1813 was recommended by President Madison as a day of humiliation and prayer. The next day, September 10, 1813, Perry, with many of his sailors being free blacks from Ohio, confronted the British squadron commanded by the one-armed Commodore Robert Barclay, who lost his arm fighting Napoleon. Well, Robert Barclay helped defeat Napoleon's fleet at the Battle of Trafalgar. Strong winds prevented Perry from getting into a safe position, and the long-range British cannon splintered Perry's flagship, the USS Lawrence, to pieces, killing many of his crew. The British expected him to raise his flag and surrender, but instead, faithful to his battle flag, don't give up the ship, 28-year-old Oliver Hazard Perry and his men courageously rowed a boat through heavy gunfire to the second ship, the USS Niagara. The wind suddenly changed directions, and Perry sailed directly across the British line, firing broadside. After 15 minutes, the smoke cleared to reveal that for the first time in history, an entire British squadron had been disabled at one time. The British had to abandon Fort Malden, U.S. General William Henry Harrison was then able to recapture Detroit, defeating the British and their Indian ally, Shawnee Chief Tecumseh, at the Battle of the Thames, October 5th of 1813. The Northwest Territory was now secure for America. To the sailors on deck, Captain Perry remarked, the prayers of my wife are answered. To the Secretary of Navy, Perry wrote, it has pleased the Almighty to give the arms of the United States a signal victory over their enemies on this lake. The British squadron, consisting of two ships, two brigs, one schooner, one sloop, have this moment surrendered to the force of my command after a sharp conflict. President James Madison stated in his fifth annual message, December 7, 1813, it has pleased the Almighty to bless our arms. On Lake Erie, the squadron under the command of Captain Perry, having met the British squadron of superior force, a sanguinary conflict ended in the capture of the whole. It's a miracle that this little fledgling country of America with our little Navy was able to stand up against the most powerful Navy in the world, the British Navy. America is unique in world history, and it's important for us to remember these miracles in American history.